I've done some videos on how to make Photoshop's AI work for you and how you can use it in the real world. I thought it'd be just a little bit fun to see some Photoshop AI fails, some places where uh, it doesn't work for you. I thought, what's the worst that can come of this? You'll either get a laugh or maybe you even learn a thing or two about maybe how to help some of those prompts. Either way, it's kind of fun to see what some of it can do. Let's dive in. All right, uh, we got our first one here and I, I really saved the first one or, or the best one for first. Um, so I thought, you know, let me see, let me see what it can do for putting stars and maybe a night sky in there with some stars in it. So I created a prompt that said realistic stars. I thought I'd just keep it simple. And that's what I got. And then that was my other variation that it gave me quite sure where that one came from. And then keep in mind, I typed in realistic stars and then it gave me this one, which I just thought was fantastic. Um, I did, I did go a different route. And so then I decided to type in realistic night sky with stars. And I got these three variations, which I mean, these aren't horrible. This one would be okay without that I just don't even know why. Um, that one's not bad. And, and again, I, I had it. How does this come across as as realistic? I will say th the ones that are somewhat decent, you do start to see where that low pixel because this is a fairly larger resolution image, and so you can start to see where that low pixel um, resolution that you're getting with Photoshop AI can come in and hurt you because that looks kind of blurry to me, as does this. And well, we won't even talk about that one anymore. All right, so beware of trying to get it to put stars and Aurora and Milky Way and things into the sky for you. Uh, another one I thought might be interesting would be a rainbow or lightning. So, uh, cause there is a little bit of a rainbow here and uh, there's really no editing trick to make it look better. Um, so I just thought, all right, let me see what generative AI will do for it. And apparently it thought that my mountain wasn't good the way that it was. So let's kill it. Um, and put a rainbow there. I mean, it's, it's, I, I don't know. It's not a horrible rainbow, but I don't know that I've ever seen a rainbow do this. Um, and then if you, we want to talk horrible, that's, 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 that's pushing it. And then of course we get this one. So, um, here's what I'm noticing. It, it, you can give it the selection that you want because I made sure I made sure I only lassoed, you know, areas in the sky here because I didn't want it to affect the mountains and, and it doesn't care. I mean, let's take the rainbow out of this. It's, it's butchering my mountains in this case. Um, but I, I, I think, I think I've proven that you cannot, and I've tried over and over again, I think I've proven that you cannot use it to generate rainbows. I would, I would not try that one. All right. Uh, speaking of rainbows, and I have no idea how that ties into what I'm about to tell you. Two quick things. One of them is free for you. I've got a free ebook, uh, 21 tips and tricks on using generative fill. So hopefully avoid some of the stuff that we're seeing here. Uh, there's a link down there. You can find out more about that one. And then also I've got a course called real world Photoshop AI. So there's a lot of talk about AI is going to ruin photography. It's going to do this. And, and I think if you let it, it can ruin a photo, but at the same time, there's a lot of real world ways to use this. And I made a very affordable, very short course, one that you can get through, one that goes through all of the Photoshop AI stuff and shows you how to use it for real world projects. Okay. I don't, I don't want it to make my photo for me. I don't want it to edit my photo for me, but there's a lot of cases where using generative fill and some of the other Photoshop AI stuff can just do the task better or faster than I can. And in that case, if it's something I really want to do and Photoshop can do it better or faster, then I'm more likely to jump in there and use some of the AI technology. Put a link down there. Hope you swing by and check it out. Okay. Uh, let's check back. Uh, another one that I decided on this one was some lightning because there was actually lightning at some point here, but I didn't, I wasn't able to capture it. So I did lightning in sky and we got these. Not horrible, not great, not horrible. <laughs> if not horrible is, is what you want for your photo. Oh, this, this was what was really fun. I put lightning clouds first 
it actually didn't do a, a hard, a, that bad of a job on this one. Although I thought the sky was pretty cool to begin with. It's just interesting how it just didn't include any lightning at all, nor this one, nor this one. But some interesting clouds up there. And then I think I put lightning in sky with clouds. So to kind of force it to go down a different path. So again, I think we've proven that rainbows and lightning are not things that you're gonna want to add, but clouds could be. Uh, fall color. I, I, I've, in fact, I saw somebody and they said, oh, you know, now I don't even have to go to a place to photograph fall color. I can just add it in into the trees in my photo. So let's see if you can do that. Um, I put in trees with fall color and this is what we got. This is what we got. This is what we got. Another one. More. And I think one more. So what I noticed here is that it barely added any trees with fall color, but it really seemed keen on adding a lot of trash and tents to my photo, which I'm not quite sure I totally understand what any of that was in the background there. Um, but I think I think we're pretty safe that that we were we have to still go to a place with good fall color to take good fall color photography. I think I think we're still safe on that part. All right, this this was a colossal failure. I thought, all right, let me see about adding people. So I typed in a prompt up here called person standing on stairs. And this is what we got. But here, you got to zoom into these because this is really where they really shine. There we go. All right. So we got that one. <laughs> I mean, what's what's over her eyes? Her feet are dripping. I, I don't know. I don't even have. <laughs> I mean, oh, once again, I think we are safe from adding people onto the photo. And it's not to say that you can't add people. I have seen some successful places in it, but they're usually really tiny and not a big part of the photo. Um, once you start adding a larger person to the photo, you're gonna see it really starts to fall apart in the faces, the hands, the feet, and some other areas that uh, it's just, it's bad. Okay, uh, great photo here. And I thought, all right, I, there's a little trick we can do and I'll, I'll even very, very quickly show you. So remember generative AI relies on us making a selection and then we get that generative fill to pop up there. But what we can do is we can press the Q button and you're gonna see your layer turn red over here. That takes us into quick mask mode. What I can do then is fill the photo with the color and go to the brightness value for that color and enter in a certain percentage. So I entered in a low percentage here. I entered in 30%. You click okay and then you press Q to get out of quick mask mode again. What I just did there was I added a selection to the whole photo, but it's only 30% selected. Okay, it's almost like a mask that uh, you're painting with a light gray color. It's only 30% selected, which means we won't see the selection because Photoshop doesn't really show you selections that are less than 50%. But what I did is I typed in generative, I, I put generative fill for this. And this is a great one to add an overall effect to your photo. You can do oil painting, canvas, textures, whatever. I decided to try rain for this and I, I was pleasantly surprised that I, I did get a photo that looked like it had a little bit of rain. And then the next two examples to me were just, I, I mean, not even close. There's no rain, but instead I, I told it, I never told it to do anything with the rock in the photo and then the, everything over here. Cause I think that's actually really good, but it took it upon itself to replace those with low quality versions of themselves. And, and not add any rain to the photo at all, which is, that's, uh, that's, that's AI for you, right? It's really trying to do something. It's just not doing what we told it to. Um, and then, then I, I saved the best for the last. It seems that anytime I try to add a hat onto a monkey, it, it works great. I, I have yet to see it fail adding a hat, uh, really onto anything, pick anything and add a hat onto it. It does a great job here. So apparently the AI is very strongly hat um, hat centered here. So there's a couple of hat photos. There's one, not bad. I mean, you'll see it puts the fur selections around it. The lighting typically looks really good when you're adding a hat to a photo. Um, all kinds of different hats. It's, it's, it'll, it'll put anything in there. 
Um, but I, there's an interesting one. I said add hat and it decided to just not do anything on the photo there. So I thought that was an interesting one as well. But yeah, just about any time you want to add a hat to the photo, uh, I found that it'll do really good. And then another one is hair. So you gotta be careful with hair because sometimes it'll actually look really good. Sometimes not. <laughs> so I, I, just put a, I just put a little selection around there. It was hot out that day. We were all sweating and it just kind of, the sun's coming through the trees, probably like some hot spots up there. So I just did a little selection scene. Let me see if it'll fill it in with some hair. So it doesn't look like everybody's so hot and sweaty up there. And we got Elvis. Um, now, it, it's not horrible in the other two. I mean, this one's not great. It did fill in some of the hot spots on there, so that's not bad. And then, I mean, that's, that's not really the way that I was I was trying to go for it, but um, it, it, it can work. I have seen it work in adding hair, and then there's times where it's been a colossal failure. Couple things as we wrap up here. Number one, hope you'll swing by, check out the real world Photoshop AI course or the 21 tips and tricks for generative fill. Also, don't forget a little while back, I did a video on all of the new features for Photoshop 2024, which is mostly generative fill, but there's a couple other things in there. That'd be a great video to go watch next.